Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today's topic in conservative dentistry is pin retained amalgam restoration. So usually uh, amalgam restoration, uh, we've been using the amalgam for many decades, but in recent time we have better products as restorative material because amalgam has many disadvantages. One is its color, it is not at all aesthetic and it is requiring a minimum 1.5 mm thickness so if it is less than 1.5 mm the strength will be marginally decreased so it cannot be uh, much recommended on class 2 cavities so if it is properly done on an ideal class 1 uh, with proper 90 degree butt joint it may last or it will last for many years but if we are planning to do amalgam restoration on a weakly structured tooth or a grossly decayed tooth we need to give additional retentive features so in that case one of the feature is pin retained amalgam restoration that is we are keeping pins within the restoration or within the dentine to provide the amalgam restoration more retention because the tooth is in a compromised state because we are not able to provide proper uh, walls so the retention provided by pin would be sufficient so that is what we are going to learn in today's session that is a pin retained amalgam restoration The pin retained amalgam restoration is defined as any restoration requiring the placement of one or more pins in the dentine to provide adequate resistance and retention forms. It is used whenever adequate resistance and retention form cannot be established with slots, locks, undercuts. So this is a basic retentive features we give to the normal amalgam restoration. So still it is not sufficient. In those cases we can opt pins for the additional retention and resistance. So it is nothing but placement of one or more pins to get the additional retention and resistance. So it is commonly indicated for tooth with extensive caries or fracture or it can also be used with uh, cast restoration. So cast restoration. And the main advantages are the one thing is the conservation of tooth structure then it saves time when compared to the cast restoration and it is economic and obviously it provides a better resistance and retention. Whereas the disadvantages, one is dentinal micro fracture or crazing. So dentinal micro fracture or crazing may happen because of the pressure which exerts by the pin to dentin and there will be micro leakage around the pin and it might decrease the strength of amalgam so there will be micro leakage and it might decrease the strength of amalgam and there can be chances of perforation of the pulp or external tooth surface so these are other disadvantages now let's move on to the cavity preparation so the cavity preparation of these mutilated teeth through excavation of carious dentine and removal of all undermined enamel Okay, so we have, this is the tooth, okay. it's a normal tooth and we have grossly decayed tooth. So this is the actual tooth, okay. So we have a grossly decayed tooth. So we need to keep the dentin floor must be sound and the rims of the preparation and the damaged area is then squared to resemble a shoulder finish line so we need to make it squared 
finish line then the outline of the cavity is extend on to smooth and sound to structure not on the undermined enamel okay it should be on the sound to structure the walls the cavity outline and we should make every effort uh, to conserve the remaining tooth structure and there should be additional undercut uh, can be given in the cavity walls so if this is a crucial cavity so this is ideal class one okay so additional undercuts can be done in cavity walls okay so additional undercuts can be given so undercuts can be given then the cavity depth is detected to determine the type of base should be used now let's move on to the pins okay so we have basically three types of pin the first one is cemented pin which is also known as merkley pins which is uh, larger than other pins and it uses zinc phosphate cement for the cementation it has got 3 mm into the dentin and 2 mm outside the second one is friction locked or tapping pins which is smaller uh, which is actually retain, uh, retained by the resilience of dentin because it has got friction there is no cement is placed here it has got the resilience of dentin is keeping it in its position so maybe uh, it has increased retain tape features than the cemented one but the problem is with the time when dentin relax there's chance of loosening of this pin so that is cemented and friction locked pins now we have the self threaded pins it has got uh, threads okay so threads uh in the pin so this is almost equal in dentin and outside that is 3 mm and 3 mm this is 2 mm and 2 mm it is self threaded pins it is available in different size it threads the threads which is present on the on the surface with which engages the dentin and it depends on the elasticity of the dentin which is the most retentive one most retentive and Uh, there is less chance of corrosion but it create horizontal and vertical stress and it cause the dentinal crease lines now we move to the tms system that is thread mate system pins so we have pictures here regular one it has got 0.031 inch diameter then minim it has got 0.024 diameter then minikin 0.019 inch diameter and minuta which is 0.017 inch diameter so you can see the picture here so this tms uh, system available in double shear that is two pins in one and gold plated one stainless steel or titanium alloy which uh, we can insert it manually or by using low speed uh, latch type hand piece So what are the factors which uh, affects the retention of pin in dentin and amalgam So the first one is uh, type of pin okay the type of pin So in type of pin we have self threading so this is the most retentive one self threaded is the most retentive one and then we have friction friction lock Uh, so it should be like this yeah friction locked and the least one is cemented one so this is the order of retention most retentive is self threaded then friction locked and cemented pins second thing is surface characteristics in surface characteristics the number and depth of the elevation on the pin that is a serration or thread it depends on the retention so the self threaded pin has got uh, more threaded uh, surface it is giving 
greatest retention then the orientation and number orientation orientation and number so if we have a non parallel pins it gives more retention so non parallel pins if the pins are like this it gives more retention and bending of pin is not desirable it should be straight so if uh, bending is there it will interfere with condensation of amalgam and it results in weaker pin and also create fracture in dentin and if we have more number of pins more number of pins it results more retention but problem is more creasing and fracture chance decreased amount of dentin available and decreased amalgam strength next we have the diameter of pin so if we have greater diameter it will increase the retention diameter diameter is high retention also will be high so the danger of perf perforation on pulp or external tooth surface is there when we increase the diameter and it interferes with condensation of amalgam and adaptation to pins then we have extension into dentin and amalgam extension into dentin and amalgam so we have retention is not increase when depth of the pin so if it is more than 2 mm in dentin it will fracture the dentin and if it is more than 2 mm in amalgam it will fracture the amalgam so the most ideal one is 2 is to 2 cuz both the case if it is more it is going high it is more than 2 mm there is chance of either amalgam or dentin so here we have amalgam so now regarding the pin placement and techniques so the number of pins so several factors must be considered when deciding the number of pins uh, it is such as the amount of tooth to structure amount of dentin available to receive the pin on amount of retention required and size of the pin so the number of pins uh, the rule is one pin for missing axial line angle so this is the rule so one line angle that is axial line angle is missing we can use one pin similarly more than one so excessive number of pins it will in it will increase the chances of fracture of tooth and weaken the amalgam restoration now the location of pin so several factors aid in determining the pin hole location so we need to have a very thorough knowledge of normal pulp anatomy and external tooth contour the current uh, radiograph of the tooth should be taken to understand the proper orientation of the canal and patient's age also is a factor so occlusal clearance should be sufficient to provide 2 mm of amalgam over the pin and pin hole should be located halfway between the pulp and dj and at least 1 mm of sound dentin around circumference of the pin hole okay if this is the pin hole there should be 1 mm dentin that is 1 mm sound dentin should be there around the pin hole and pin hole should be located halfway between the pulp and dj okay that is 1 mm inside dj pin hole should be located in areas where greater stress occurs that is the first thing that is regarding the distribution of occlusal force okay it should be at a area where the greatest stress is happening then it should be located near the line angle of the tooth or the marginal ridge or cusp tip and should be parallel to the adjacent external surface but not closer than 1 to 1.5 mm
and it should be prepared on a flat surface if three or more pinholes are placed it should be located at different vertical levels on the tooth not on the same plane it should be at different vertical levels one here one here one here not on the same level and inner pin distance depend up depend upon the size of the pin and maximum inter uh, pin distance results in lower the level of stress in dentine now regarding the perforation which may result from pin hole placement so over the prominent mesial concavity of maxillary first premolar so maxillary first premolar there is always a concavity on the mesial side so there are chances of uh, external perforation and at the midlingual and mid facial bifurcation of mandibular first and second molar we should also be very cautious and at the mid facial mid mesial and mid distal furcation of maxillary first and second molar all these locations we should be uh, extremely cautious not to perforate the tooth so in pin hole preparation uh, the uh, number 1 by 4 burr should be used to prepare a pilot hole uh, it is to permit more accurate placement of the twist drill than prevent the drill from crawling once it has begun to rotate an optimal depth of pin hole into the dentine is 2 mm and this hole should be prepared on a flat surface and the drill perpendicular to it place a flat thin bladed hand instrument into the crevice and against the external surface of tooth which indicate the proper angulation of the drill So what are the causes of uh, failure of pin retained restoration okay so we can have uh, failures at various levels okay so if this is our pin retained amalgam okay so we have amalgam here so occur at five different location that is a fracture occur at five different location one is here this is a restoration fracture fracture here that is a pin restoration separation at the interface between the pin and restorative material so this is the amalgam restorative material this is the pin so between the interface now we have third fracture here that is the pin fracture that is happening within the pin okay so the pin will be fractured okay now we have the fourth fracture that is pin dentine separation at the interface between the pin and dentine okay so it will be here this is the pin and this is a dentine so there will be fracture here and finally this is the fifth one that is dentine fracture that is happening within the dentine so these are the five locations where the fracture can happen so problems that arise during the pin retained restoration the first thing is the broken drills and uh pins that is a twist drill uh, will break if it is stressed laterally and allowed to stop rotating before removing the pin hole and if you use a dull drill okay and pin will break uh, during uh, over screwed in the hole if you are trying to over screw the hole the chances of breakage of pin so loose pins uh, basically uh, due to uh loosen while uh, uh shortening with a burr and pin hole uh, prepared is too large in these cases uh, the pins might be loosen and next thing is penetration into the pulp and perforation of external two surface we already discussed that where we should be very cautious and then there are chances of lateral perforation and also apical to uh, gingival attachment the placement will be apical to gingival attachment so these are the problems associated with pin retained uh, restoration so uh, we discussed in detail about various types of pins uh, its uh, placement and the cavity preparation uh, requirements and the failure details of all these pins and its advantages and disadvantages this is a commonly asked essay question in university paper so hope you understood this uh, concept of pin retained amalgam restoration where we use pin 
to provide a better resistance and retention to the amalgam distillation so i'll come up with a new topic in uh, conservative industry thank you